Hello F11 members and welcome back to the Fundamentals of Post-Production video tutorial. Uh, this is part one for the issue 24 January 2014. Uh, it's Christmas Eve morning and I'm recording this tutorial and what I'm wanting to do is <coughs> excuse me, work through this picture of uh, an Exmoor pony shot last uh, October on our uh, Exmoor uh, photo explorer adventure. Uh, now it's a picture that that I think's got some potential uh, but uh, the sky in the background of this pony appears very washed out uh, but if I look at the histogram it's pretty much all there there's just the tiniest bit of clipping going on over here if I hover my cursor over that area it shows you and I think there's the potential to process this picture with quite a dramatic sky in the background. And if I, to assess the potential of this picture, just drag the curve down to look at that sky in the background, that indicates to me that there is detail and drama available there. So let's think, as usual, about what I'm going to do before I do it rather than just plunge in and start playing with sliders hoping to stumble across a solution. What I'm going to do is to make two different conversions from this same frame one for the horse and the landscape and another for the sky and merge them subsequently in Photoshop. So first thing I'm going to do is look at the image and very firstly there's just a stone down here that's slightly irritating to the frame there I'm just gonna crop slightly and I'm gonna you see this here that lock and key now if I click on that what's that I indicating is the aspect ratio of the images locked so I'm gonna keep that 2 by 3 aspect ratio the relationship between the length of the shortest and longest edges of the frame and if I just drag one corner in just a touch I'm just gonna lose that rock in the bottom of the frame down here I could of course use uh, content aware fill for example to get rid of it it's a slight distraction but I think just going in a touch tighter will be beneficial now I don't generally speaking uh, crop my images. I try and do it all in frame, in camera. I think it's a sloppy practice. But when shooting wildlife, uh, things in the heat of the moment, uh, I think sometimes uh, compositions that were made very quickly can be improved with just a touch of cropping. Uh, so there you go, just a touch there and I'm now going to click on done so that's done my crop next thing as usual I'm gonna look at up here is my black and my white points here first of all let's address the blacks and the darkest tone in the picture at the moment which is probably somewhere in the mane of the horse is not a black it's a sort of muddy gray so we're gonna deal with that by sliding the black slider to the left until this toe of the histogram up here is right up against the left hand limit of the histogram display and when I go too far this red cursor comes on indicating to me where I'm starting to lose information by the way if I hold down the alt key while I'm doing this uh, and go too far it starts showing you where you're starting where I'm starting to clip information over there where those blue tones are, to, are appearing that's where I'm starting to click so I'm going to come right back every pixel is precious I don't want to clip any shadow precious shadow information so there you go I have a black clip of minus 36 let's now address the white clips but just think first what I'm doing with this conversion is to dealing with the bottom half of the image the horse and the landscape I can ignore what's happening in the sky so if I do the same with the whites hold down the alt and bring it to the left 
all I'm I'm still clipping there's still a bit of clipping going on but what I'm looking at here is this edge up here and I've just brought the whites back a touch to oh, in fact I'm going the wrong way what I want to do is go this way sorry about that it pays sometimes to just step back and think about what you're doing and what I'm doing is trying to improve the contrast of the lower portion of the image by moving the whites to the right I'm clipping losing information in the sky but that doesn't concern me at the moment because we're going to come back and do a separate conversion for the sky what I'm doing here is just looking at what's happening in the bottom portion of the frame and so by doing that I've improved the contrast of the horse and the landscape and if I go compare where I started you can see it's a subtle change but a discernible one a better tonal range in the horse and the landscape there this loop view this down here toggles between the loop view and cycles between the bore before and after views okay so now uh, we've improved the contrast of the image already but uh, I still think it's a little bit flat so I'm just going to use the uh, preset the Lightroom preset called medium contrast and that's just by selecting that let's put a bit of contrast into the frame there and I'm getting some really nice tones in the horse here now it's starting to look quite good uh, I will just dial in just the merest hint of vibrance here I think just because of the accentuate some of those lovely tones of of uh, her main I believe she's a, a her <laughs> I'm not sure um, so now uh, I need to sharpen the picture and as usual I'm a fan of Lightroom's uh, preset here called Sharpen Scenic but of course what I normally do is adjust the masking and again by holding down ALT and dragging the masking slider across here the black indicates to me where the mask is being applied and with a mask masking of 20% on there you can see the sky is being masked where there are no discernible edges but the masking is being applied sorry the sharpening is being applied to the horse and to the landscape which is what I want so at this stage now I look at this picture and I say well I'm happy with that in terms of the horse and the landscape uh, that's made a big difference again look at before and after and you can see that change there it's subtle but it's definitely bringing out a bit of bottle in the picture and I think when I've twinned that up with a, a good dramatic sky should have quite a good picture okay so now I'm going to export this I'll go library that uh, export uh, where do I want to put this I'm going to put it in a folder called images and processed select that folder and put it in a subfolder called Xmore and uh, next thing I do always scroll down through all of this because it's so easy to use the last exporting settings I had uh, I'm going to use a prefix of horse and I want TIFF 16-bit Profoto RGB color space I do not want to resize I do not want to sharpen I don't want to do anything in fact and export that now so that's our first conversion done and now go back to the develop module and think again and it's almost starting again but now I'm just considering the 
sky. So the first thing I'm going to do before anything else is take that medium contrast tone curve off just by going back to linear. Alright, now let's come back to, we've got massive clipping of whites here, so that needs dealing with. So by bringing the white slider back, holding down Alt here, until all the whites disappear. Uh, in fact, I'm going to bring whites back to, yeah, around about there, I think's about right. And then I'm just going to use the highlights slider here to dampen down the tones of the brightest tones in the image and you can see I'm starting to get some interesting detail uh, in the sky now compared to where we started already look at that left and right that's quite a change already just shows what detail is there that can be brought out from the raw image Right, next thing I do is come to the curve and I'm looking at the sky and I want it much darker. So the easiest way of dealing with that is to drag it down here just until it's dark enough. Uh, I'm going to take that vibrance off because well, as soon as you start darkening and adding contrast to an area of the image it has the effect of boosting the uh, color content of the of the image and skies can easily look over the top uh, with a bit so I've taken that vibrance out uh, I need to just uh, recheck my white clipping everything's okay there uh, that sky's about right I think it could go even a touch darker so I'm gonna bring that down a bit more and I also want to use a grad filter here really subtle grad filter just to put a touch of gradation across that kind of area so I go graduated filter and then I just determine what sort of area I want this grad to work on and I'm gonna move it down ignore the horse because we're gonna use a mask to to protect the detail in, on that horse's back there this is really adjusting the whether it's going to be a soft or a hard gradation. Okay, uh, and now I just using the exposure slider here, just dial in a touch of gradation there. Again, I, I want to be subtle here, and I think that's about right. And I click on done. Next thing, I just need to re check my black clipping you can see there now it's showing me I'm clipping some highlights that's bound to be in this area of the horse uh, it's not really a worry because we're going to be working from the other area the other part of the image the previous raw conversion for for the horse but I'm just going to adjust that anyways because I'm a bit worried about some of those there just take out until that red up here disappears and now that's a very dark image but again it's only the sky I'm concerned with go to before and after and look at the difference there quite significant and I'm now ready to export I'll go export and of course all my savings will be all my settings will be exact as the, the same as the previous one so click on export and uh, I think at that stage we're ready to take a break uh, and come back in part two to see what we're going to do with this in Photoshop. See you there.